Okay, so I've got to admit it, I'm really excited. AMD have just released a new generation of graphics cards, the RX 5700 series, and I'm just about to pull the trigger and buy a 5700 XT, throw it in the Unraid server, and see how well it works, being passed through to various VMs. So, is my excitement going to be warranted and I'm going to be really pleased with the card, or am I going to feel a bit let down by AMD? Well, let's find out. So whilst I'm waiting for the postman to deliver the card, I just want to say that this video isn't going to be the typical review of the RX 5700 XT as you may have seen elsewhere. I'm not going to be concentrating on benchmarks and how many frames per dollar the card offers. Us guys who run a Linux OS like Unraid and pass through the GPU, we've got additional concerns other than our FPS count in the latest and greatest AAA title video games. Now over the last few generations of AMD GPUs, such as Vega and Polaris, there's been something called the AMD Reset Bug. So what is this? Now for most people out there, they'll never see this bug at all, because it doesn't affect normal bare metal machines. But when used as a graphics card that's passed through to a KVM virtual machine, that's when this bug crawls out the woodwork, or should I say out of the silicon. Now at first everything seems fine, you can start up a VM and it will work absolutely fine, but the problem happens is after you've shut it down, because then if you try and start up another VM or even the same VM again, you can't, it will throw an error. Because when the VM shut down, the graphics card wasn't fully released, it's left in a low power mode and the graphics card because it hasn't reset properly, it won't pass through to a VM again. And the only way to really reset the card is to reboot the server. Well, actually, there are a couple of ways that you can work around it, but that's for another video. Anyway, we've got a new architecture now, so I'm really hoping that this isn't going to be a problem this time round. Hey, that's it, it's here. So, time to unbox it and put it in the server. Okay, but first I think I'll just put the box and the card down here on the radiator while I make a quick cup of coffee. I'm sure it'll be fine just for a moment. Okay, so that's better. I needed that caffeine. So let's take the card out of the wrapper. Oh my god, no. Why did I leave it on the radiator? I think I've melted the shroud on the card. The radiator shouldn't have been on. It's the summer. Ah, uh, hang on, hang on. Let's have a look properly. I think it's actually meant to be like this. Yeah, I didn't buy the 5700. I bought the 5700 XT. And that's the one with the funny shaped shroud. Okay, okay, I can hear you all cringing out there. I'll stop with the bad jokes, get serious, and put it in the server. Okay, so the RX 5700 is in the server. So let's have a look at the system devices and see it in its IO MMU group. Okay, so here we have it. VGA compatible controller, AMD ATI Navi 10. Okay, so I'm just heading over to the VMs tab and I'm going to do a quick test just popping a card into a Windows 10 VM that used to have an Nvidia card in and just seeing if I can get it to start up. Now I have put the RX 5700 XT in the primary slot on the server, but traditionally with AMD cards you don't actually have to pass through a ROM BIOS when using as a primary GPU. So I'm not going to put one in, I'm just going to add both the graphics and the sound part of the graphics card. Okay, so I'm going to fire up the VM and see what happens. Hmm, okay, this isn't looking promising. Nothing on the screen. The screen's just black. Okay, so maybe on these new AMD cards, we actually do need to pass through a vBIOS if the card is our primary or only card in the machine. And luckily, over on Tech Power Up, somebody's already uploaded a BIOS, so I don't have to dump it myself. And as this is an AMD BIOS, it will have no header like the NVIDIA ones do, so it won't need to hex edit it, I can just pop it straight in, and it should work. Okay, so I've put the BIOS in now, so let's fire it up again and see if it works this time. Okay, so that's a bit more promising, that's more like it. The VM's actually starting up now. Okay, so first note to remember with Navi GPUs, as a primary GPU, you must pass through a vBIOS. Okay, and that little notice at the bottom right there, you can't actually really read it because my camera isn't the best. 
but it's saying that Windows is trying to find a driver. But let's actually install the proper AMD driver from the website. So as you can see I'm installing the driver now and whilst this driver installed a very strange thing happened. It gets to about 40% which is the point when the driver gets initialized and then suddenly boom black screen and the whole VM crashes. So not a good start. Now later I did actually get the driver to install as you'll see in a bit. But I'm just going through this video in the order everything happened during my testing. Now on the AMD driver page I see that they've got a driver for Ubuntu for 18.04.2 so I thought I'd pass through the graphics card to Ubuntu and install the driver and see what happens there. So just here I've passed the graphics card through to Ubuntu Mate 18.04 and I've installed the driver and just rebooting the machine. And everything's working fine, the driver's working and everything's great. So it got me thinking what is the difference between a Ubuntu VM and a Windows VM so why wouldn't the driver install on Windows? So let's shut down the Ubuntu VM and just have a look at the difference. Okay so here's a Ubuntu template and here's a Windows template. And we can see the BIOS type they both use OVMF. But the difference here is actually the machine type. Ubuntu is using Q35 chipset and Windows by default is using the i440FX. So I wonder what will happen if we install a Windows VM but install it also using Q35. So let's give that a go. Okay, so this Windows VM is installed with the Q35 chipset and we'll start installing the drivers the same as before. But this time, thankfully, the drivers actually do install properly. It gets to its 40% and then the drivers initialize and the drivers do install successfully. So second note to remember with Navi GPUs, for Windows 10 drivers to install successfully, the machine type must be set to Q35. Now I know I said that this video isn't going to talk about benchmarks and it isn't. Well okay maybe just one. Now at this point it was really late at night and I was really happy that I'd managed to get the drivers to install on Windows. So I really wanted just to try and benchmark something. Now earlier that day before the GPU had arrived I'd done a benchmark on the game World War Z which actually is an AMD optimized game using my Nvidia GTX 1080. So I decided to benchmark the game again using the 5700 XT just so I could get some sort of comparison. Now I didn't really do these tests very scientifically at all. I literally just ran the benchmarks. I only did it once and this is the results I got. So during this benchmark I did find that the RX 5700 XT did outperform the GTX 1080 by about 20%. Now this is just a rough and ready test that I did, I just wanted to compare my existing card the GTX 1080 with this new RX 5700 XT and from this one test I was really pleased with the performance of the card and was generally pretty happy. So I thought well as it was late I was going to shut down the VM, go to bed and then continue doing more tests and more things with the card in the morning. But the morning was when my happiness finished. <laughs> My old enemy, the AMD reset bug, was back. So I really didn't expect this, because I'd actually started up the Linux VM, shut it down, and then started up the Windows one afterwards, and I had no reset bug. But this was the first time that I'd started up a VM after having shut down the Windows 10 instance. And this is what happened. So after having shut down Windows, the card hadn't been reset properly when it's passed through to another VM. So the only thing I could do to reset it was reboot the server. Not really something I wanted to do. So just how bad is the AMD reset bug with Navi? Well, if you're careful, I guess it's not too bad. So what you have to do is if you're running a VM, you must shut it down properly. So you must do a clean shutdown on whatever version of the OS that you're running if you don't want to experience a reset bug. And if the operating system you're running supports it, you can also do a clean shutdown from the VM manager within Unraid by clicking on a VM and then going to stop. Now, if you do this nine times out of 10, the graphics card won't lock up, but you're always gonna get that one odd time where it does. And there's nothing really you can do about that. And there are certain situations which will cause the graphics card not to be able to reset. And that's if a VM crashes or if you force stop a VM. So don't force stop a VM. If you do, then it's not gonna start again and you're gonna hit that AMD reset bug. 
Now actually there is one exception to this rule where force stopping a VM doesn't cause this problem and that's if you force stop a VM that isn't using any graphics drivers for the AMD card. But really, why would you want to be using a pass-through graphics card without driver support? But I thought I'd just mention it because it's kind of an interesting quirk about the AMD reset bug. So anyway, let's wrap this up and make some sort of conclusion. Should you buy the AMD RX 5700 XT to pass through to a KVM virtual machine? So let's look at the facts. If you're going to be using this graphics card as the primary card or the only card in your machine, then you're going to have to pass through the VBIOS. But really this is no big deal because if you had an Nvidia card, you'd have to do the same for that too. So next, when using a Windows VM, we can't use a VM that uses the i440FX chipset because the driver won't install successfully. Yeah, this is a pain, but really it's not the end of the world. And if you have any existing Windows VMs that are using the i440FX chipset, well, it's really easy to convert them to Q35. So I don't think this fact is a really a big deal. So now this brings me on to my biggest gripe. It's that damn reset bug. Yeah, it doesn't happen all of the time. If you're careful, you can minimize the chances of the card not resetting. And there are even ways of resetting your card without having to reboot the server. But really, as much as I really wanted to like this card, I don't want to have to think about my card not resetting. And I think for me, this is a deal breaker. Come on AMD, us Linux users have been moaning for years online about how your newer gen cards are having this issue, and I really thought this wouldn't be a problem with this generation of GPUs. Now, there's only really one thing that can make me consider using this card in my server, and that's a Mac OS VM because Apple, they've dropped support for Nvidia, and you're only going to get an Nvidia card working on Mac OS up to High Sierra, and nothing newer. At the moment, it's too early to tell whether we can get these cards working in Hackintoshes, but I've got a feeling with Mac OS Catalina, and in a few months' time, we may well be able to get these cards working on that. But at the moment, they don't work on Hackintoshes, so we can't use them in our Mac OS VMs. So for now, I'm going to be sticking to my GTX 1080 and this card is going to go on eBay this weekend. Okay guys, so that brings me to the end of my kind of review or overview of this card. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and you know anyone else who might like it, then please share it with them. If you like my videos and you're not already a subscriber, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me, then you can do that through the links in the description. And to all of my supporters out there, I just want to give a really, really big thanks to all of you guys. It's you guys that make it possible for me to make these videos. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.